So I will spend a few words, my presentation will be quite quick, about uh, what are, from, uh, from the regulatory perspective, the main points uh, to be addressed then to see, e to see if so the limits and the potentialities of uh, the distributed ledger technology uh, in terms of infrastructure for the market, okay? So I will provide you, if you want, a different perspective with respect uh, to what you have already listened to. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, maybe it is not so clear for you, but uh, there is a significant distinction between trading and post-trading. Trading means something that uh, has been addressed today is about uh, how a market is formed. So how people trade with another one and uh, uh, this, the key issue is to understand if uh, the distributed ledger technology can help in this direction. The second is about post-trading. It's the most relevant issue. Mm, just to give you an idea, we are talking about a market which all around the world is uh, several billions, uh, tens of billions of dollars worth. Uh, the value of this industry is quite relevant. And there are some estimate which says that uh, distributed ledger technology can help to save 30 billions of dollars per year. So, of course, this number is, uh, is uh, to, be, to be addressed, but uh, this is the view of some, of some people about. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm not going, I, I will give you my, uh, when, uh, when we address this issue about uh, with the regulatory authority, they are quite skeptical about, uh, they are afraid if you want, okay? And uh, I think that uh, the main point that uh, we had to put aside of our discussion is uh, uh, the story of uh, blockchain Bitcoin. The story of blo blockchain Bitcoin somehow uh, is, uh, the approach is uh, uh, the idea that the market can be developed in a fully decentralized way, as already discussed before, and uh, this is something that the authority doesn't like. This is the key issue. Then, uh, when, uh, so, putting aside this issue, which is quite relevant because, of course, how a decentralized framework can work without uh, uh, money on the ledger is a, an open issue, of course. The authority are interested to understand uh, how the distributed ledger technology can help in terms of saving costs and in terms of some key points. Here, uh, I just want to, uh, wanted in this, uh, in this uh, slide to point out the main issue that uh, we discussed with this authority in, in order to understand the potentiality. First of all, there is a, an open issue about restricted and unrestricted DLT. Of course, unrestricted, which comes from the story of blockchain Bitcoin, is something that we don't like because uh, they don't want to, to allow everybody to trade uh, free of uh, any kind of uh, rules, if you want, more or less. So, and uh, this is the key point also to understand for the financial industry. Financial industry doesn't like uh, a pure unrestricted uh, DLT because uh, they cannot make money with this, simply. This is the point. So the, the strong, uh, uh, pressure from the industry, from what I've seen, is to take the technology, to take to to build a, a restricted uh, DLT in such a way that only banks can intermediate uh, what we have as a trade. The second point is uh, uh, the role of a central authority. Okay, this is uh, as already said. I don't know if you if you see yes, you say referring you were referring to banks. Uh, to Bitcoin, it means that you don't have a central banks, and uh, and uh, and so uh, without uh, as a game without a referee. Look, in the finance, we already we already experienced something like that. Okay, money without a central bank is uh, was based in Scotland, and it was a, a very disa a strong disaster. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in in any in any case. So this is the first issue. Why? Because. Uh, what we call uh, uh, money is a uh, fiat money. It has a value of my money that I have on my wallet because some people will use it in the future. And that is the classic, the main reason to use money. 
Bitcoin has not this uh, uh, capability, if you want, and also other cryptocurrencies don't have. So the key issue is to understand how an authority can, uh, can certify that uh, this, uh, this uh, money will, be, will have a value also in the future. This is about the central authority, but not only. Also, uh, the CONSOB or other market authority are really keen to understand uh, what level of protection people have uh, when they enter in trade. So all the trade uh, and post-trading is a strongly regulated uh, market, a strongly regulated industry where companies have to address some rules. We will sh I will show you later on a few points on this. Uh, the other point that I would like to, to stress is uh, I, I fully, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, when you speak to a lawyer, uh, we started, uh, we, we worked with some lawyers about this topic, and uh, it was a very, very difficult conversation, I have to say, because uh, they always try to reduce all kinds of innovation to some general rules that they have in their mind or which is in the law. So they don't speak about, okay, the, the main point was, uh, uh, probably for you is uh, not really easy to understand, can we say that uh, a trade that has been d done on, a, that has been registered, sorry, on a distributed ledger technology is really a trade in front of uh, a court? This is an issue, an important issue. And uh, so, because of course, if you trade uh, with another person, you, if you trade through a bank, some, somebody, a central authority or an institution, uh, of course, uh, banks are not very well reputed today, but uh, a, a, an institution like a bank can testify that you have your money, you have an asset and so on. Can we say the same thing when we trade and it is registered, when it is registered on a blockchain or a DLT and uh, we have a trade between two people? This is... Uh, an open issue, and uh, of course it's a strong obstacle because uh, if you want to propose something, you have to propose it in such a way that uh, it satisfies the law. Uh, there is, uh, of course, another point is uh, still a point that has been addressed, but uh, developers are working on it, is about uh, uh, anonymity. Okay, because uh, it is not anonymous, it is anonymous in the sense that you have uh, a code but uh, there is a significant regulation on anti-money laundering and on these regulators will not uh, give up so for sure this is the, probably the, the most important point okay so um what what about trading industry uh i'm really skeptical uh, here is paolo with whom we work somehow and we discuss about it the potentiality and uh, i'm really skeptical that uh, a system where you think that uh, a DLT can be a place where there is a market, uh, a real market. Why? Because uh, it is almost an over-the-counter market. So a place where you meet with another person, you say, do you want to trade this? And then you can use a DLT as a register. But the DLT as, at, at this time doesn't work as a, a marketplace. A marketplace means a place where you meet another one who would like to sell you an asset and you would like to buy. In economic, in finance, we say that uh, we cross demand and supply. This is something that, for the moment, it is very difficult to do. Smart contracts can do something, of course, but, uh, for example, this is the reason why peer-to-peer -peer lending or crowdfunding is not, uh, it makes sense, it, it is relevant, but uh, it, is, it cannot substitute in the future organized markets. On the other hand, DLT are very interesting on these, uh, on facilitating trading, at least for a couple of points. First of all, it may help very well, it may help to organize over-the-counter market. Over-the-counter market are markets where you find another part, the counterparty, by a phone call and so on. Why? Because uh, DLT can, uh, has uh, some interesting too. First of all, transparency, so you know exactly if uh, the other part is the owner of an asset, and uh, certainty, and uh, this can be really interesting, okay? So it, you may have, uh, you, DLT can enhance uh, transparency in this, in, this, uh, 
in this environment, and the OTC market are not transparent at all. Uh, pulse trading is probably the most interesting application of DLT. Why? Because uh, just to, to give you a point, uh, when it, pr probably you, you don't know exactly, but uh, when you sell, you go to a bank, you say, I want to sell this asset. Uh, after, and the bank say, okay, I have sold this asset to another person. Uh, the, behind this, there is a, an industry that works. In which sense? The banks doesn't hold directly the asset. It is a play based the asset in what we call a custodian. So a bank which uh, detains the asset physically, digitally, of course. Okay. And uh, when uh, I sell the asset to another guy, he's a, his account is in another bank. So the two banks have to talk to each other. They had to realize that uh, I have the asset. His, his bank has to realize that uh, I have, the, have this asset. And they had to realize that he has the money to buy it. This process is quite complex. So the, the, the real interesting point for the financial industry is uh, to build the DLT in such a way that uh, we can avoid all the um, costs that are involved in this. And this is a real huge amount of money. So it is what we call a reconciliation somehow. Reconciliation of position. My asset, his asset, and so on. So uh, here there are very different technical stuff, so I'm not going to, to address it because they are very uh, different and uh, uh, very boring, I would say, issue to address, which is not uh, interesting today. What I would like to say is that uh, there are some uh, European Central Bank and uh, financial authority have tried to understand uh, how it can work. And there are three, what we call three scenarios. The first wall is that uh, uh, it works, uh, I, I, st I start from the first one, is uh, very simple like uh, Bitcoin or like uh, any other ICOs and so on. So you are not uh, handling an asset which is a listed asset, which is uh, uh, registered, we say, at a central security depository. So uh, asset that you invent an asset and so on. In this case, you had to satisfy only the national law. And in this case, you may, you may work very well. In fact, we have many ICOs and so on. So there are not too much constraint. The problems come when you want to trade on a DLT and you to register on a DLT an asset which is a listed asset. So you want to trade fiat, general, and so on. A an asset which is relevant. Okay. In this case, uh, there are two, two routes. First of all, to use a DLT as, a, as an internalized system for listed shock. In this case, the authority uses a DLT sharing these uh, in a restricted way with uh, all the financial intermediaries. And this can be done quite easily. Okay. So if you want, this is probably the thing that the financial industry is looking for. A restricted DLT where I place that uh, Emilia Barucci has an asset and so on. The other point is uh, probably is uh, uh, to use a DLT not only as a register, but uh, as a settlement instrument, which means to match the orders exactly. And then these are strong constraints. Okay, there are strong constraints because uh, uh, you had to satisfy some, uh, let's say, some uh, uh, rules that uh, we apply today to the trade in terms, for example, of anti money laundering, in terms of uh, knowing when. Uh, uh, cryptography of uh, the, all the procedure in such a way that uh, the asset is recognized as a digital asset. And for sure, in this case, regulatory authority would like to have an eye on what happens. So you will have, uh, my view is that uh, this form of, uh, uh, of organization will be a restricted, a restricted DLT where the central authority will play a significant role in terms of validating the trade, or at least uh, to understand if the validation has been done correctly. So if you want, we will go, as you said, in the direction more or less of, a, of a more centralization with respect to a pure decentralized environment. Uh, so these are more, some of the points that I have, already, I have already said. One of the points that is uh, significant for all uh, 
this application is on inter interoperability because uh, nobody believed that, uh, and this is something that we had to understand, but probably you know, nobody believed that uh, we can have a DLT worldwide uh, which is accepted by everybody. So interoperability is a, is a significant issue. Another point, uh, but as I said, is, uh, has been addressed somehow, or is, uh, people are addressing it, is anonymity. Anonymity is uh, something that is not only referring to the fact that uh, you have a code, a password, and uh, you, what is uh, necessary is that uh, you don't want to, that I don't want that other people know that I have done a trade. This is something that is relevant, okay? So this can change significantly the DLT approach. The last point is uh, probably uh, one of the, the, the interesting issues is, uh, is uh, money on the ledger. This is uh, still, uh, I think, a legacy of blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, from my perspective, as I said, I'm not sure that uh, uh, DLT with money on the ledger will be the future, and for sure, central bank will not uh, accept it. So, oh, this, I think, is uh, something that uh, we had to realize. I don't know, maybe things can change, but this is my view uh, as far uh, for the moment. So uh, there are some market experience. There are many interesting market experience. Probably they're, they're, I want to, to, to quote two cases. First of all, in France, they are considering to change what is the equivalent of Italian uh, Codice Civile in such a way that uh, we can allow for transaction on the DLT, register on the DLT. The other two experiences that are interesting are the one on uh, Singapore and the other one uh, by uh, Central Bank of India, where they are trying to build a consortium with banks in such a way, which is able to speak to the regulatory authority to trade, uh, to trade the smart contract. The other one is uh, more, so the, other, the first two, if you want, are somehow institutional in the sense that uh, we are a consortium of fintech, uh, fintech district in, uh, initiative, but uh, regulatory authority are on board. The other one is by pure investment banks like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, which are trying, are considering to do equity swap uh, in, the, in the DLT. Conclusion. Uh, I think that uh, I'm not saying that uh, I forget the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. I'm not saying that uh, this is the point. I think that the uh, Bitcoin blockchain will have a future, but not as relevant as we think. This is my view. Oh, where is, uh, where are, what is the point? DLT can be an interesting way to organize the financial industry in a new way. The there are four points that are relevant. Cost saving, which has already been discussed, reliability, regulation, and interoperability. These are the four main points that it should be addressed. Uh, the last question is, uh, when I speak, say these things to my colleagues in Informatica, in uh, Politecnico, they tell me, OK, but uh, if you have all these, uh, these doubts, let's say, let's think if uh, we can do exactly the same thing without uh, a DLT. And I think that this is uh, probably the most interesting and strong uh, uh, test uh, for all the DLT application, in the sense that, uh, OK, you need the, you want a distributed consensus this can be achieved also in a very in a simpler way without uh, building a dlt so i think that this is the point that uh, we should address thanks a lot